Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, fighting back against the toxic legacy of MK Ultra. We got that story plus some funky good news about crooked politicians. But first, Amazon's decision to market a powerful face recognition tool to police could vastly accelerate a dystopian future in which camera equipped officers can identify and track people in real time, whether they're involved in crimes or not. This has come from some crazy conspiracy site. No, it comes from the Associated Press. It's not clear how many law enforcement agencies have purchased the tool called Recognition with a K instead of a C since its launch in late 2016 or since its update last fall when Amazon added capabilities that allow it to identify people in videos and follow their movements almost instantly. Some agencies have used the program to find abducted people and amusement parks have used it to find lost children. British broadcaster Sky News used recognition to help viewers identify celebrities at the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle last weekend. Amazon's technology isn't that different from what face recognition companies are already selling to law enforcement agencies, but the vast reach of the Amazon monster and its interest in recruiting more and more police departments at extremely low prices is troubling. Amazon released recognition in late 2016, and the sheriff's office in Washington County, west of Portland, Oregon, became one of its first law enforcement agency customers. A year later, deputies were using it 20 times a day. Last year, the Orlando, Florida Police Department announced it would begin a pilot program relying on Amazon's technology to, quote, use existing city resources to provide real-time detection and notification of persons of interest, further increasing public safety, end quote. That's always that that big canard, public safety. We'll include a link in the show notes to a fawning story about using recognition on that latest royal Nazi wedding, but it's all coming together quite nicely isn't it james all we need now is for the amazon's washington compost to write a story about how great all this is right uh exactly right and of course this is the nexus that is forming the 21st century technocratic enslavement grid it's these big tech tech companies are just an arm of the intelligence agencies of the deep state of the pentagon perhaps best exemplified by bezos and his 600 million dollar Uh, contract with the CIA, which he uh, signed just months after, I think, uh, finally signing the deal to uh, take over the Washington Post. And, uh, and of course, the, in more recent times, they have a secret uh, cloud computing deal with the CIA. I think they uh, just signed some uh, cloud computing contract with the Pentagon last year. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Amazon is just an extension of the deep state at this point. So I don't think this should be particularly surprising. I think the underlying point of this is the police are going to be using this type of technology going forward, whether it's supplied by Amazon or whoever. But it is, uh, it should be very worrying for people who are seeing this develop and seeing this big tech, you know, monstrosity acting as the 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 arm's length uh, uh, tool of the police state. Oh, we're not actually the police state. We're just selling them stuff. Uh, right. Yeah, I think we know how that works. So, uh, as always, uh, the the power lies with us to deprive Amazon of its lifeblood and to stop using their services. Easier said than done, but still, it needs to be done. And uh, I think we all have a responsibility and a part to play in that. Well, and of course, the stories will always have the human interest angle. Won't somebody please think of the children? How could you be against something that would help find abducted children? But I bet it won't be too long before we hear the stories about cops using this to sort of stalk old ex-wives or old enemies or vendettas that they have, as we've seen that happen already before with sort of the uh, the stingrays and all the other sort of biometric police state tools that they've all kind of rolled out. So speaking of the Washington Post, our second segment on this 340th episode of New World Next Week takes us back to the criminals in action as we go to The Guardian. Sarah Ann Johnson had always known the broad strokes of her maternal grandmother's story, speaking of sort of the human interest kind of angle in these stories. In 1956, Velma Orlikow checked herself into a renowned Canadian psychiatric hospital hoping for help with postpartum depression. She was in and out of the clinic for three years, but instead of improving, her condition deteriorated and her personality underwent jarring changes. More than two decades passed before Johnson and her family had an explanation, and it was much stranger than any of them could have imagined. In 1977, it emerged that the CIA had been funding experiments in mind control brainwashing at the Allen Memorial Institute in Montreal as part of a North America-wide project known, of course, as MKUltra. 
At the time, the U.S. agency was scrambling to deepen its understanding of brainwashing after a handful of Americans captured during the Korean War had publicly praised communism and denounced the U.S., of course, they turned that into a major motion picture. The Manchurian Candidate, as I always like to mention, directed by John Frankenheimer, who, after hosting Bobby and Ethel Kennedy with other guests like Roman Polanski and Sharon Tate at the house, John Frankenheimer, the director of Manchurian Candidate, would drive RFK to the Ambassador Hotel where he would be killed by a Manchurian candidate. But I digress. In 1957, this interest in brainwashing brought the CIA north of the border where a Scottish-born psychiatrist, Ewan Cameron, was trying to discover whether doctors could erase a person's mind and instill new patterns of behavior. Orla Cow was one of several hundred patients who became unwitting subjects of these experiments in Montreal in the late 50s and early 60s. It's almost impossible to believe, said her granddaughter, Sarah Ann Johnson. After grandmother died, the Canadian artist began reading up on the Institute, delving into Orla Cow's journals and court documents. Some of the things he did to his patients are so horrible and unbelievable that it sounds like the stuff of nightmares. Patients were subjected to high-voltage electroshock therapy several times a day, forced into drug-induced sleeps that could last months, and injected with mega doses of LSD. So I'll include in the show notes another story from the CBC that was tweeted using hashtag New World Next Week by our friend, video editor Brock West, that gets into the actual W5 of this story. These are families looking for restitution. They want to, to be paid back, I suppose. The article title from The Guardian is The Toxic Legacy of Canada's CIA Brainwashing Experiments. But the one from the CBC that actually kind of gets into the nitty gritty of who's asking for what, when, where, why, and how. Group affected by CIA brainwashing experiment, experiments wants public apology and compensation from the government. So, James, we've hit this. This was uh, November 2nd, 2017, to be precise. Again, Canada pushing back against the CIA. Canada pays hush money to silence MK Ultra victim's daughter. We talked about that story back here in November. That's James. right. And for people who don't remember, that was about Gene Steele's daughter who had started a legal action against the Canadian government for its role in uh, fostering that uh, that MK Ultra program uh, that basically um, made her mother uh, com well took her completely off the rails, made her insane. And the Canadian government paid $100,000 hush money for Gene Steele's daughter to drop the case. And at that time, we were really questioning, you know, what is, what is, uh, what is justice in a case like this? Does restitution or compensation, can you put a dollar figure on some kind of horrible events like these? I don't know. I mean, again, I'm certainly not, um, I'm not besmirching the families of these victims who are going after the, the government trying to get the apology, trying to get compensation. But the f more fundamental part of this is this should never happen in the first place. And it shouldn't be the case where they do these types of experiments and then maybe three, four, five decades later, maybe get pay you some money to make you go away and shut up about it. That's not the way this should work at all, obviously. So the question is, what is real justice in a case like this? What would really, what, uh, what even could really uh, constitute justice? And of course, the MKUltra program, as I'm sure our viewers are aware, goes much bigger and broader than just what was happening in Montreal. I mean, it was, it was a, a much broader program and included such, uh, such um, uh, graduates of the program, if you want to call them that, as the Unabomber, of course. And people who don't know about that story should really look into the Unabomber's history and where he really came from and uh, just craziness. So... Yeah, this the, this really begs the question of what is justice in a case like this, and how much you know, how much can you make rain money on a problem and make it go away, and uh, presume that to be the, the justice that we're seeking here. We were actually talking about the Unabomber earlier this week on my morning show. It was actually Ted Kaczynski's birthday a little bit earlier this week, and we were talking about the Unabomber and CIA connections. We will also include in the show notes. Film, Literature, and New World Order, Episode 31 on the Manchurian Candidate, and an article about the killing of Robert F. Kennedy. So you can, you want to, again, there's multiple avenues you can kind of go into research all these kind of darker areas. Our last segment on this episode, 340, will keep us in Canada, James, for a little bit of good news mixed with truth music. DJ producer Sticky Buds prepares to take a stand against crooked politicians based in Calgary, Alberta. DJ and producer Tyler Martins. He's toured the world for over a decade as DJ Sticky Buds. He's got a new song and perhaps more importantly, new video for a song called Crooked Politicians. 
And it's a preview of Tyler Martin's debut album, Take a Stand, which is due later this summer. He said, quote, this song is about the influence of corporate lobbyists and the monetary corruption of our so-called democracies. Not limited to any side of the political spectrum, our politicians and elected officials have sold us out. This really is the kind of truth music that Tyler has wanted to write and produce for a long time. And I'm a fan of his, and James, I can tell you right here, he's a fan of ours, and he's a fan of New World Next Week. And he has been, again, this I think kind of gets to the heart of when we, when we discuss truth music. He's known about these things for a long, long time. He's now able and sort of ready to put all this into his music, into his art. Take a Stand is his debut full-length album. So that's going to be coming out a little bit later this summer. I played the song earlier this week on my show, and I highly recommend people checking out the video. It's very well done. It's one of those good kind of easy things to share around with folks that probably shouldn't get too many bad you know, flags on all the file sharing and video platforms, James. Yes, and it's always great to see a fellow Calgarian, nonetheless, uh, getting into this. So my hat's off to everyone who does this. I hope people will check out the video. As you say, it's well put together. And it, uh, yeah, it, it's not partisan. I mean, it, it takes shots at every politician, which I think is the right way to do it, uh, especially with this uh, particular topic. So I hope people will check it out. Absolutely right. Yeah, and I, I hopefully I think you know that's a good way to put a little bit of a little bit of good news, a little bit of positivity here in these New World Next Week episodes. I always like to mention towards the end that I do broadcast my own stream Monday through Friday, nine to five at mediamonarchy.com slash listen. News, music, memes, and more, as I like to say, James. All right, and uh, stay tuned to CorbettReport.com for more videos and interviews to come. So until next week, talk to you later. All right, buddy. Take care.